Now that I completed a couple fun pieces to go into my library book nook, it was time to build the structure to hold those and the other items I'll be making. I wanted to make a man's home library that is more funky than the usual library, so I channeled my inner funky guy and went for it. In a world, a tiny, miniature world that exists only in her imagination. Hi y'all, I'm Tippy Cal, Mini Maker Sal's imaginary friend and video narrator. I'll be taking you through her process of building her book nook structure, the floor and the walls. So let's get started. Mini Maker's table saw is too small to cut the pieces she needed for the floor and walls of the library, so she had to cut the quarter inch and eighth inch pieces of basswood by hand, an unpleasant task at best. She first used her tungsten tungsten carbide scribe tool to score the wood where she wanted the cuts to be. On the main cut, she then used her razor saw to complete the cuts, and that took forever. On the window, after using the scribe tool, she then used a wood ch chisel to cut the hole through, and of course she sanded all the cuts as needed. These are the pieces she ended up with. By the way, she since purchased a small circular saw with a four and a half inch blade with 120 teeth to cut the bigger pieces of balsa and basswood in the future. Sal printed out the striped cream and dark gray wallpaper she made up, then coated both sides with Mod Podge. After Mod Podging the paper to the wood, she gave it another protective coat because she has found the paper can blur if it gets damp, so she prefers to go a bit overboard. Sal printed this photo of the sky to use behind the back wall of her library. She then did the spray coating and Mod Podge things as she did with the wallpaper. When that dried, using wood glue, she attached the back wall to the floor and put some heavier wood pieces in front of and behind that wall to keep it straight as it dried. Minnie Maker Sal wanted a plant behind the window in front of the sky so she used floral tape and wire to create leaves. She first put Mod Podge on one half of the tape, then turned it 180 degrees and Mod Podge the other half. She then placed a piece of the floral wire roughly down the middle of one half of the tape and folded the other half over so the wire was between the two pieces of tape. She pressed it all together, then set it and a few other pieces aside to dry. Once the strips dried, Sal cut them each to about three inches tall, then started out cutting pieces with her exacto blade, leaving what looks like leaves on five of the strips. She then twisted the branches a bit and stuck them into a piece of floral foam. She then cut each of the rest of the strips into individual long leaves and painted them a pale yellow green then painted a darker outline and vein lines. When dried, she poked them into the foam and this was the result. This is where the plant was glued to the floor before she put in the back wall with the window. The next step was the floor. Sal didn't take photos of most of the steps, so hopefully this should suffice. First, she cut a piece of white styrene that's about a 32nd of an inch thick and cut it a bit larger than the floor would be. She then wiped the top down with rubbing alcohol to ready the surface for acrylic paint. In retrospect, she should have sanded it first with fine sandpaper so the surface would be slightly rough, making the paint and other things easier to adhere to it. She then put a thin coat of acrylic modeling paste down onto which she cut score lines after that dried. There were both long lines about three-eighths inch apart and occasional cross lines to delineate planks. She then painted three coats of black chalk paint and applied a clear acrylic gloss to that. When that was done, she trimmed the styrene to fit the floor space and used spray glue to hold it down. She then made a baseboard out of one quarter inch wood inlay strip she got at Woodcraft. She cut the lengths to size and glued it to the wall with Mod Podge. It almost looks like a high-glossy black painted wood plank floor. 
Because the back and sides of this book nook may be visible on occasion, Sal wanted to make the outside look like a very thick book. She purchased some black vinyl that has a leather-like finish. She first cut out some chipboard and felt to fit the three sides and spray glued them together. She then spray glued the felt side and adhered it to the back of the vinyl. Next, she trimmed the vinyl about a half an inch larger all around than each board and used black Gorilla Tape to hold the remnants down. She then got ready to using the hot glue to attach each panel to its surface. She put the hot glue around all edges of each side of the nook and then it pressed the panels down to the outside. On the back panel, which would be the book spine, she made up a decorative title plate for her book nook, printed and laminated it, and then attached it with spray glue. And finally the structure was done. Not as perfectly as she wanted, but Sal is happy with it overall. Coming up, Mini Maker Sal will be making a funky easy chair for her library. She has an idea, so soon we'll see how that turns out. As Tippy just told you, a chair is my next project. I cannot wait to make that and hope you'll come back to see it. Thank you so much for your time. Please click like and subscribe and be sure to leave me a comment.